begin our worship with some uh, special music to center us. Parenthood in these explosive days. 
worship our Lord God. I would ask you on this exciting day to put away the busyness of life. Think about why you are here. And please pray. Oh, glorious loving God. What a beautiful day you've given us. There are so many beautiful things outside that you share with us, and we thank you for that, Lord. You are so loving and gracious. This morning as we gather here, we ask you, Lord, that you put blessings on each person that has come here to worship you. Allow them to be with them always. Fill their hearts with your spirit. And let them find you as you have found them. We ask, Lord, for blessings for those who are participating in this service. For the music and the love and fellowship. And for our pastor, whose words you have put on his heart. And we are here to hear them. Thank you for this exciting day that you're bringing us today. So many beautiful things are happening. And we thank you for that, Lord. We thank you for each person who we recognize today. And we give thanks for all that you do for us. Be with us this day and this week. And fill us with your spirit as you filled ours with your son, Jesus Christ, whose name I pray this prayer. Amen. Go ahead and stand up and sing together.
So love, that's a good word. Uh, what's another word that tells me something about your mom? Sorry? Sweet. Respectful. Your mom respects you. Okay. Caring. Moms are caring. All right. Uh, any other good words? What's a word for to describe your mom or grandma or affectionate? That's right. Okay, those are all good words. Well, uh, why do you think we have moms? Because they help us stay alive. Yeah. <laughs> That's right. I'm sorry. They put us on earth. We wouldn't be here if it weren't for our mom, would we? That's right. So somewhere out there is well, there's more than one. There's lots of very important moms and very important grandmas. And some of these folks, even if they're not moms and grandmas, uh, they've been Sunday school teachers, or or they've been a mom or a grandma to you here at church. They made you cookies or give you a hug or something. Yes. Okay, okay, okay. If you're not old enough to drive, they can take you around. Mom's taxi. Okay. So, um, I think that God gave us moms because that's one of the ways that we get a sense of what God is like. Uh, we talk about God being our father a lot of time, but God is a parent. God loves us like we are kids. And that means all these things you said about moms are just a little hint of just how much more God loves us, how God respects us, how God uh, takes care of us, uh, watches out for us. Uh, these are all things that tell us a lot about God. And so today, as you guys are showing love for your moms and grandmas and all those other important women in our lives, uh, think about it as a way to show love for God by loving and respecting now, we have special gifts today uh, for the moms. So after the service today, if you guys can help me out, we've got flowers back there. We also have some devotions and some magnets. And those are gifts from the church to the moms and grandmas and all the ladies today. And we need you guys to help pass them out, okay? So, so at the end of the church, uh, go to the back there where the flowers are and make sure that the ladies get flowers. And if they want a devotion or a book, they can give them those too, okay? Right, thanks. Back to your seats. Now I'm going to invite the uh, uh, Norton family to come up. No, I'm not. No, I'm not. I'm going to invite my wife to come up.
For Anna, I was determined not to pollute her with Barbie dolls. But at one of her early birthday parties, some of my friends colluded together and they all bought Barbie dolls for Anna. And looking at her today, I guess the experience of having Barbies didn't damage her too much. But Anna had other turmoil within her tiny soul. At two and a half, I started getting calls from preschool that she was biting the other children. I was horrified that my kid was doing the biting. How dare she do that? My mom was visiting, and after we got the call, she pointed out to me that she thought that Anna was actually pretty far behind in language development. And we suddenly realized that while she made a lot of noise, we couldn't understand anything she was saying. She was biting because she could not communicate. Turned out her ears were filled with wax due to allergies. She couldn't hear. So she was creating her own language. So after therapy and medical help, we got all that cleared up. But I think sometimes Eric still wishes that Anna didn't talk so much. <laughs> oh, and here he comes now. Uh, later in kindergarten, her world was so dismal that she sat on a piano bench in front of me with a sheet of paper and tried to slit her wrists. My father said he had never seen a kid so angry with the world. Turned out her kindergarten teacher wanted us to stop reading with her because her reading skills were too far advanced for the rest of the class. And we were not to read with her until the rest of the class caught up with her. Needless to say, I decided to start homeschooling, which was not part of my plan. But she hasn't tried to hurt herself since. Now all of these moments started making me question how much I really knew about being the perfect mom. No matter how much research I did or how confident I was in my parenting, some things just didn't go right. My last burst of absolute certainty about my mothering abilities resulted in our adopting an older child in need of a home. Again, I dove into research to make our home the perfect sanctuary for someone who had been repeatedly rejected by previous families. But while I tried Batman to be the mother I thought Cameron needed, he didn't agree that I was the mother he needed. I enlisted the help of many professionals and as a team we got Cameron the support he needs and he will be celebrating his graduation in two weeks. So as I stand here today, I'm no longer certain about what it means to be a mom or to be a family. I certainly don't know everything anymore. I even recently got to hear my kids debating over which of them I'm favoring and attached to the most. So much for trying to love all my kids equally. But I think this is where parenting runs into God. God could have made us robots who automatically believe in Him and do everything He wants us to do. But He wanted the joy of the relationship, of having us want to be with Him, of having us want to do what He thinks is best and wise. While I have certainly had moments when I wish my kids would do exactly what I wanted them to do when I wanted them to do it, it's the moments when they do beautiful things that I've never thought of that brings wonder and joy to my life. At this point, I need to trust my kids and let them launch into their lives. Maybe they'll soar, and maybe they'll crash. But holding on too tight smothers our relationship, and the joy disappears. Likewise, each one of us is a child of God, and He gives us the space to launch as well. And sometimes all of us have crashed, and sometimes all of us have soared. But sometimes, we may laugh with joy and wonder at the creation in our souls. <laughs>
be guided to accept God's grace for themselves, to profess their faith openly, and to lead a Christian life? And do you, as Christ's body of the church, reaffirm your rejection of sin and your commitment to Christ? Will you nurture one another in the Christian faith and life and include these children who are now before you in your care? God tell, we will proclaim good news and live according to the example of Christ. We will surround these children with a community of love and forgiveness, and they may grow in their trust of God and be found faithful in their service to others. We will pray for them that they may be true disciples who walk the way that leads to life. These questions are for all of us. Let us join together in professing the Christian faith as contained in the scriptures of the Old and New Testaments and in the Apostles' Creed. Do you believe in God the Father? I believe in God the Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. Do you believe in Jesus Christ? I believe in Jesus Christ, His only Son of the Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under the Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and died in the Spirit. He descended into the dead. On the third day, He rose again. He ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand. And do you believe in the Holy Spirit? I believe in the Holy Spirit, the universal church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. The Lord be with you.
us and Jesus. May the Holy Spirit work within you, so that being born of water and the Spirit, you may be faithful disciples of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. It's our joy this morning to welcome Tice and Jace in Christ. Your baptism, you're incorporated by the Holy Spirit into God's new creation and made to share in Christ's royal priesthood. We are all one in Christ's goodness. With joy and thanksgiving, we welcome you as members of the family of Christ. Members of the household of God, I commend Tice and Jace to your love and care. Do all in your power to increase their faith, confirm their hope, and perfect them in love. We give thanks for all that God has already done. We welcome you in Christian love. As members together with you in the body of Christ and in this congregation of the United Methodist Church, we renew our covenant faithfully to participate in the ministries of the church by our prayers, our presence, our gifts, our service, and our witness. And in everything, God may be glorified through Jesus Christ. Now may the God of all grace, who has called us to eternal glory in Christ, establish you and strengthen you by the power of the Holy Spirit, that you may live in grace and peace. Amen. All right. Let's give them a round of applause. Yeah. 
appreciation to you, uh, both recognizing what you've done and also in appreciation for all that you do for the church. And uh, thank you. I'll uh, a card for you and then a messenger bag with some goodies inside. And we look forward to hearing all the exciting things you're up to. So keep us posted. All right. Let's give them a round of applause. Lord, we give you thanks. Uh, it's a delight to baptize children, and it's a delight to see them grow up and see what they become. As I give you thanks for our high school graduates this year, uh, we have seen the miracles you've made in their lives. We look forward to seeing the amazing things that they're going to go on and do, and how you're going to continue to be faithful to them. Lord, learning never ends, and uh, as we go through uh, college and then through life, and then sometimes back to school, Continue to teach us new things and call us in new ways to serve your kingdom. So we give you thanks for Mike as well. We pray the, the best for all of our graduates this year, that you will walk with them along their journey, that they will not suffer from fear or uncertainty, but they will know that uh, you are with them and we're, uh, we're right behind them. Love them and pray for them all. We ask these things in your name. All right. Thank you. We somehow all this stuff lined up on today, and they're like, what are we going to do? Well, what better way to celebrate Mother's Day than baptize babies and celebrate graduates, right? Uh, that's what moms hope happens. So, okay, we're going to move into our prayer time now, and uh, we pray as a, a people in this church. It's not my job to pray for us, it's all of our work to pray and to lift up those things that we're, we're grateful for and give God thanks. And also lift up those things that burn our hearts, the things that we're worried about. So I'll offer a short prayer to introduce this time. And then uh, if you have a prayer that you would like to offer, raise your hand and I'll bring you the microphone. And you can offer your prayer directly to God. All of us are going to be praying and listening. And when we hear your prayer, we will join it in our hearts as well. Let's go ahead and bow our heads. Lord God, you care for us and love us uh, as a parent, as a father, as a mother, as a creator. Uh, you made us in your image, and you wish for us the best, as all parents do. Lord, we sometimes struggle. Uh, we have our trials in this life, uh, but we also have tremendous joys, tremendous blessings, including those people sitting around us here this morning. Blessing to be together with family and friends. <coughs> As we come this morning, we come uh, to you in prayer, uh, bearing, uh, bearing joys that overflow and bubble up, bearing uh, grief or sadness or, or worry for others that we know of. We bring these things to you now and ask that you hear our prayers. Prayer is your Lord, 
we give you thanks uh, for good results and uh, four years of help following uh, surgery and transplant. And thank you for the miracle that is each day. Lord, we thank you for 150 years of blessings on this church to pour on the community. We pray today that, that our 150 celebration can do justice to a lot of all the things that we've blessed this community with through us. And we ask that we continue to Lord, we lift up. Thanks for this congregation and 150 years of witness in this community. We pray for 150 more years of witness. Our community prays for joy, peace, and patience as Andy passes his test this week to be a certified. Licensed advanced Thank you, Dr. Andy. Thank you. Lord, we lift up Andy and especially pray for peace as he prepares and takes his tests. And pray that you will help him recall to mind all that uh, he has studied and learned so that he can go out and serve you uh, even more in this week more. Good prayers. What I want to lift up the uh, uh, Ryder family. Gary and Julie have been under the weather, and we pray for healing and health for them. Uh, Lord, I want to lift up Pastor Stan as he prepares to come and serve this community. We pray that uh, this would literally be a match made in heaven, that uh, Stan and Mosby Methodist Church together could go on and lay the ground for that next 150 years of ministry. Lord, you have blessed us in many, many, many ways. And not least of all is simply the ability to get up on a day of sunshine and breathe in the cool air and smell the grass growing and the trees blossoming. And know that this is a good world, that uh, you have made a special place for us. We may struggle sometimes to, to understand why we're here or what you would have us do. We should never doubt that you love us and your plans for us are for our good. We ask all these things in your name, and we join in the prayer that you taught us. Father, Father.
speaks for us believers in harmony with God's own will. Amen. Thank you. Let's take a moment and pray. Lord, may the words of my mouth and the thoughts and prayers of all of our hearts be acceptable and pleasing in your sight. O oh God, our strength and our Redeemer. Amen. Well, today, Annalise and I are watching two of our kids as they prepare to graduate from high school and go off to college. And we started planning for this day 18 years ago before our daughter Anna was even born. When as young newlyweds, we started dreaming about our children and what they might accomplish. Now it's very easy to plan out parenthood at the beginning. It starts with picking a color for the baby's room and picking clothes. The anticipated milestones seem so real. The first crawl, the first walk, the first words, the first day of school. Dads imagine playing catch in the yard. Moms dream of that first prom date and seeing their little girl all dressed up. High school, college, the Nobel Prize, the presidency. <laughs> The plans are easy when we start out. Next. But the birth of a baby is a reality check, so maybe it's a good thing that fathers are now welcomed into the delivery room instead of having to wait outside. That's how we get to see our beautiful and loving and sane wives become disheveled, insane, intensely focused mothers with one objective. Get this thing out of me! Being a technology nerd, I was excited that I got to go in, and I was interested in all the gizmos they were hooking up to my wife uh, for the birth, and I was watching that little screen and the little line of me going across, and it was spike, and I'd say, oh, look, dear, you're having a contraction. And she would squeeze my hand into a pulp and say, I know. <laughs> so I was introduced to the reality of fatherhood in that birthing group. Everything I knew about helping breathe, 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 here's a pillow. Turned out to be pretty much useless when it came time to actually give birth to our kids. I was a spectator, I was a cheerleader, I was a comforting presence, but I couldn't do much besides stand there and watch and work. Birth is a messy process. It hurts. No matter how much we desire the outcome, there's a painful waiting period to and literally there are blood and sweat and tears. I have never heard my wife groan with such intensity. And so when I read in our scripture today what Paul writes, I think of that process of childbirth. Paul says, all creation is groaning in the pains of childbirth right up to this time. And we believers also groan, even though we have the Holy Spirit in us as a taste of future glory. For we long for our bodies to be released sin and suffer. We long. Well, birth is just the start. Parenthood, motherhood means a lifetime of joyful moments, but also a lifetime of painful waiting, of groaning, of sleepless nights and poopy diapers, and the flu and teenage heartbreak. Plans never go quite like we expect. Next time. Life in Christ is often described as a new spiritual birth. So we shouldn't be surprised if our new life with Christ is filled with both joy and trouble, with laughter and with groaning. We are God's children, and that means the wonder of childhood, continual learning, discovery, making new friends, but it also means occasional scraped knees, occasional heartbreak. And what sustains us through our spiritual childhood, this life that we live, is what sustains children through growing up, the powerful love of a parent who celebrates every milestone, who feels every alley as if it was their own. Children experience this most directly through their mothers, who are always there to cheer and cry, to love and to make things better. Moms and grandmas live and feel every moment of their children's lives, the good and the difficult. We have a God who loves us like a parent, with the full love of both father and mother. God is always with us. The Creator groans with anticipation as we stumble through our life of childhood toward our eternal life. Christ groans with us on the cross, feeling the full pain of our sin. And the Holy Spirit is ever present in our lives, offering the quiet strength and the comforting help of a mother, groaning and 
rejoicing with us on our journey. We are the children of God, and in both the groaning and in the joy, we are the love. So we look forward to that bright future day of graduation into eternal life, and we can truly celebrate. Happy Mother's Day. Let's rise and sing together the victory chief.
time. I want to share with guests among us that in the Methodist tradition, communion is open to all. You don't need to be a Methodist or a member of this church. This is the table of God's grace, the banquet, the foretaste of the heavenly banquet that we all are privileged to share. So if you'd like to receive communion this morning, you're welcome. Uh, when you come forward, uh, if you'd like to touch the baptismal water, remember your own baptism, you're certainly welcome to do that. And then when you come forward to receive the bread and the juice, come with your hands together. Brianna will give you a piece of bread. You can dip that in the juice and eat both elements together. If you want to kneel up on the altar items and pray, you're welcome to do that. And if you're celiac or need a gluten-free uh, bread, then I'll have a small plate of those so you can ask me for one of those. On the night that Jesus gave himself up for us, he took bread and he blessed it and broke it and shared it with his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of when the supper was over, Jesus took the cup and again gave thanks to God his Father and then offered it to his disciples, saying, Drink from this, all of you. This cup is my blood of the new covenant poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. Let us pray. Lord Jesus Christ, you love us more, more than we can imagine. As you stood looking over Jerusalem on the weeks before your death, you desired to, to draw the people of the city together as a hen draws her chicks under her wings to shelter them from the storm. You still look at us with the love of a mother, the love of a brother, the love of desiring to draw us to yourself and shield us and protect us and help us to know your intense and immense and all-encompassing love. Lord, as we come this morning uh, battered and bruised by the storms of this life, we come into your presence. We come under your wings. We receive your grace. We know your love. And we know that we are your beloved. Lord, we ask that you would pour out the Holy Spirit this morning. Pour it out upon this bread and juice and make them be for us your body and your blood so that we might be for the world your body redeemed by your blood. Through your Holy Spirit to make us one with yourself, one with each other, and one in service to all the world. A huge and loving family. So you come again in final victory and we feast together at your heavenly banquet. We pray these things in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. bread that we break this morning is a sharing in the body of Christ. This cup of which we give thanks is a sharing in the blood of Christ.
Thank you for coming and worshiping with us today. It's uh, delightful to have you all here as we celebrate Mother's Day and graduates and baptisms and all this good stuff. Uh, so you go forth today. I hope that uh, you find ways to celebrate together and, and to keep this spirit with you. If you're visiting and you're curious to know more about this congregation that lives in the family of God and delights in celebrating the milestones of life together, then ask us because we're happy to talk about what goes on around here. If you'd like to spend some time this week in prayer or you've got a celebration and you just got to share it with someone, give me a call. I would love to spend some time with you walking uh, through life and uh, assisting and praying as I can. We're going to close with one more song. We'll have the blessing and we'll go for it.